guys welcome back to the channel and happy Sunday to you guys I hope this video find everyone doing well and in good spirits guys you're gonna hear some wind out here and some planes or some airplanes flying overhead and my neighbor's dog barking because we outside just kind of overlooked that guys I called myself got my umbrella out so it can cut some of the wind I know how that wind sounds in videos, but when you're doing stuff outside, certain things you cannot eliminate. Okay, guys, what I want to, what the video I'm going to share with you this morning is about sharing. It's probably evening by now in the air. Mm, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, it's probably about 12 or whatever. But I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I had told you in the past that I had something that. I wanted to share with you guys and guys this is it uh, after this pass I mean after this what went on a few weeks ago in this winter I know that I'm gonna have to have some source of heat out in my uh, greenhouse because I will be storing certain plants over there when it in the in the winter time when it's getting cold especially when the temperature gonna drop I, had, I was going to start by doing some plants that I know that cannot take no freezing weather. It's not vegetable plants. It's just going to be some flowering plants that I plan on doing. So I knew I was going to have to have some source of heat out there because I put a thermometer out there and I seen where I have my uh, greenhouse located. Them temperatures drop pretty low. Um, at night time and uh but in the in the uh late evening stuff i get that eastern sun and it warms up pretty good so i was debating what type of heat that i was going to use i had asked tuck i said what what you think we could use he was thinking about like run a electric cord out there out into the greenhouse and put a little electric or electric heater out there but I didn't really want to do that simply because we have problems with squirrels and chipmunks around here. And they like to gnaw on anything that they can get their mouth to. So I know they was probably going to be gnawing into that, uh, into the uh, extension cords that we would have to run to put out into the uh, greenhouse. So it just came back in my, in my memory when I had my salon several years ago up in my reception area we, it was a big it had a very high ceiling and everything and I had a custom made um, what we call it here flower, flower box mm -hmm. it stood high and I had beautiful uh, vines and whatever kind of flowers I wanted to put in there and I had quite a few flowers guys over in my reception area because you know I told you I used to love, love plants. But anyway, over in the area where I worked with the shampoo bowl and my dryers and stuff like that, I had gas heating over there. But it was no heating up in that reception area. And then while people was waiting and I had my plants and stuff over there, and when it got real cold, because back in the 80s we was having sort of just like the cold weather that we had this past winter. winter. We was having it just about every winter. So um, we had bought a kerosene heater, and that was the type of heat that I used over in my reception area, which was awesome. And so I, and you know, I told Tuck, I say, what about getting a kerosene heater? Because the kerosene heater that I had in my salon, I sold it several years ago, and uh, Tuck thought he said, I don't know. If he would be able to, he said that would kill. I said kill plants. He wasn't thinking. I said you know we had it up in my. He said oh yeah. I said we had. And I said it didn't affect not a thing. It was anything. It made them uh, <laughs> more you know better. I mean made them just you know just just vibrant and healthy looking and all that good stuff. None of them died while, you know over the winter because when we were when I wasn't working up there. I mean you know. Uh, even after I cut the um, heater off during the day and at night and stuff like that, it's still, you know, the place stayed 
pretty warm and I didn't lose any plants. So that's what I decided that I was going to try. A kerosene heater, guys. And that's what this is. I got a small one because that's not a large area that um, I'll be trying to heat. And then another reason that I'm going to try this is because I'm, I will be doing a lot of seeds this planting season starting in the spring and which normally we just already get the uh, plants but I'm going to start seeds because you know I did those collards that was just a it was just a, a journey with the collards you know getting all torn up and doing all that put them in the gr uh, greenhouse and they still end up doing well so I have a lot of seeds that I have already ordered from Baker Creek. I like Baker Creek seeds. Um, you know, I'm not I'm not sponsored by them or whatever, but I call it like it is. I have had always have had uh, good results with the Baker Hill seeds, and I have tried other and never just sort of add. So Baker, anyway, Baker guys, Creek. what did I call it, Baker, Baker Hill? Hill. Yeah, let's yeah, take it to it's Baker Creek. Uh, seeds because they have the heirloom seeds and that's what I was really interested in trying. I want to bring back some old time stuff that I, you know, back in the day stuff. You know, I believe in let's go back to the old landmark. And, uh, you know, I got a lot of uh, 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 subscribers that's my age and they always can relate to me when I take them back down memory lane. And we just we just get a we get a blessing, a joy, and a kick out of all of it, doing those old memories. So um, this is the heater. Uh, I ordered it off of Amazon, and Tuck is gonna do a, a show you how it works and stuff like that, guys. But this is what was kind of exciting to me. Re reason I chose this one. Because I didn't really want a big one. And they had another little old small one about the size of a lantern. And because, uh, you know, back in the days, guys, we used to use uh, kerosene uh, lanterns for lighting. You know, putting light in your house. So, but this one right here is also a stove. Yes, it's a stove. Haven't tried it yet. Gonna try it. And when I try it, and, um. Uh, I probably would share that would share that with you guys too, and I th and I want you guys to leave a comment when Gary when I get up here and show you how the thing work and stuff like that. Cause I was thinking, can I just put my iron my iron skillet up here, my cast iron skillet, or could I just put? I have like one of those what they call cabin. What's that? A cabin Dutch oven. It's made out of cast iron, but I was wondering if this can hold it. But uh, just for for kicks and fun, guys, I'm definitely going to try it simply because in our area, it has gotten better, thank God. It didn't take nothing but some strong wind before we would lose our electricity. And we have uh, something running up behind my bike. I don't play that. Uh, we have uh, supposed to be underground electric lines. What you call a thing? Electric wire, electric lines. Yes, uh -huh. But believe me, it don't help trailer. over here. Between people running into the uh, uh, electric poles and the wind blowing and all of that situation and stuff like uh, around here, it's nothing for us to lose power. So, guys, that's all. I done told you what this is all about. It's the kerosene heater and all that. And Tuck gonna get over here and tell you, cause he set it up for me with all the situation. But uh, yeah, let me tell you one, 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 uh, one more thing. When we went to this particular hardware store, uh, looking, for, uh, we was was we looking for one at kerosene and all that. I'm gonna show you guys. If you was to listen to what everybody say now, you would be just. Just crazy as a change. That's what the old people say. Crazy as a change. And then some people just come up with their own narratives or whatever it is and not know one thing about what they're talking about. 
so it was a lot we had a lot of the uh people that come over to help us when i told them i was looking for the kerosene heater they was you know had uh very good associates in there that was helping and all that stuff and so the more mature ladies and stuff went back up towards the front and left this young lady back there that was helping us and she looked to be probably in her 20s right Tuck? yes uh -huh. and then she was going she waited till they left before she said that and she started trying to tell me that you know the kerosene and stuff uh supposed to be uh you know it wasn't it wasn't good for you i said and i thought she probably had heard something i don't know because it's been some years since i used the kerosene i said what's the deal with it and she said I, I you know i don't know but uh I would think that the the uh, fumes and did or whatever the smell or whatever would not be good for your health. I said, "Well, you going you you gonna use a well ventilated place and stuff." And uh, I said, "Well, it's something new that they done came out because you know these. I'm not trying to be funny, but these uh tree kissing the ground. I mean, uh, you know, uh, tree hugging ground kissing people got a whole lot of stuff." to tell people that done been here a while and they experienced this here. And then I know some of the older people believe some of this here stuff that they be saying. Some of it may be right, but I have heard a whole lot of nonsense that I don't you know. Whoever want to go by it, they going to go by it, but I don't know. I've seen people live uh, live their life because you're not, we know none of us not going to, we're not going to live forever to prove that some of that stuff uh, that they say is not true. So after she said that, and then I told her how I used to use one. I said, I used it for, you know, probably close to, um, what is it, about 12, 15 years when I stayed up there in that spot before I moved to the other one. And I said, well, yeah, I didn't have any problems with it. And she was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, okay. I thought she was fixing to uh, uh, inform me of something that, that she knew about it that I didn't know because I don't keep up with everything. And then I said, oh, for this one. But anyway, that's what she was saying. But the ones that want to try, try, I can tell you this much. I haven't did it with my seeds and stuff as of yet. But I know for a fact with mine, it, this don't kill no plants. And, uh, you know, my greenhouse is outside. And we use it's inside where we was breathing and everything else. And nobody ever had a problem with it and really didn't have too many uh, uh, too uh, too much of a smell, but you know, kerosene got this unique smell and stuff like that. But this was not the, the heater that I had. It was not a heavy kerosene heater. But uh, and and Tuck and I thought, I said all of this stuff we were going through. We have generators and all that. I said, how did we forget about the kerosene heater? Then we got to thinking, do they still sell, sell kerosene? Cause you used to go to the service station guys, just like at a, it would be just like a gas pump. And that's where the kerosene, you could get the kerosene out of it. But years ago, right here in, in, this, in the time that I live in, during the time that I was using kerosene, I think that was one of the reasons they stopped serving it, I mean selling it at the gas station. It was an elderly gentleman. He went up there to get car I mean get some uh, kerosene and he got the gas and put he was you know putting it in a can and he accidentally got gas and put it in there. And so when he went home to start his heater or whatever it was, it was gas that he had in the keros in the kerosene can. And he it started fire, his house burned up, and so did he. So guys, that's all I can tell you about this now. And um I'm probably gonna I probably will uh cook something on it just to see what it how it works and all that that kind of stuff. Just for the uh the know the knowledge of it fun and anything else you want to call it but i'm gonna go ahead on and turn this over to tuck and let him light it i don't know what he planned on doing with it but i said you got to take over that part because i haven't even tried it yet we hadn't been long got it you know he got it together and was it already put together or it came like this or did you have to assemble it i had to put it together oh he had to put it together so i let him talk more to you guys about it and listen guys enjoy your sunday and uh, we're eating leftover. I had leftover plus I had found this, uh, what you call that? A gyro, 
a gyro, a guy, what is those things? Gyros? Gyro, yes. A, dry, a gyro kit. And I kind of like those things. I don't eat them that often. We get some from Arby, Arby's. And um, so I found that I was out grocery shopping and I seen that. And we tried that and it was good, guys. Had plenty of meat in it and it had, it was, the kit was for four servings. We have already eaten two of them. So that's what we're going to have today. And I don't have a a weekly meal to show, uh, share with you, but uh, I'm gonna have to cook something tomorrow or the next day, and uh, I will share that with you guys. So, okay, I'm gonna turn it over to Tuck if he got any time left on it. <laughs> Talk with you later, guys. You cut it off? No, come on. You got it up pretty high. Uh oh. Putting right here on the front. Where you zoom in and out, the little right where is that? It's pretty good. Place. And then, so you kick it in so you make sure it's straight. <laughs> Looks like it is, but this is what you're watching right there. You know, I can't see that, don't you? I, I, I'm doing pretty good. That sun is on it pretty good. Hey guys, I want to just kind of show you a little demonstration about this. Can't hardly hear you, Tuck. You don't have to. We're going to uh, demonstrate this kerosene heater that uh, May May was talking to you about. It do double as a heater and also a, a cooktop, a stove top, where you can cook on it. So you can see from the thing, it has a dial here and it has a wick in it. Do and I need to zoom up? Uh, yeah, but see. you're mashing the button, you turn to, to zoom it. I turn. Oh, I have to a lever on the front of it. So I just, right. took, so I just took a picture? You probably did. Wait a minute. Hold on just a minute. Hold on guys, let me make sure she's on the camera right. Is it recording? Yeah, it's recording. Yes. I didn't cut it off, did I? Right here on the front. The front side oh, okay. matching the button, you turn it in and out. Oh, okay. Like so. Like so. Alright. But guys, this is uh she was talking about she was wondering if she can put a a, a frying pan or a pot or something on it, but yes you can. That's not just on the top of this where it will sit, raise up and not necessarily sit down on it. You got a grate here which come out where the flames will come through on it and it raises up and down. So if you're going to cook something, you got three notches here on this, but you can raise this up and down and get it closer to the flame. Oh, I didn't and know that. that will determine how fast it cooks. Or how cooking like this. So but normally if we were gonna use it for the heat like what, what we're primarily gonna do, I would raise it up like this and tighten things, everything on it. No, we don't never know with the heat. Fuel goes in here. Uh, the kerosene has a gauge there to tell you how much it has in it. This lets the wick up and down. You let the wick up to uh, light it. When you, when you finish cooking you turn it in and it will take the the flame out. This is the uh, kerosene we're using now. Like she was telling you about, you can get it from a lot of, uh, some stores and things used to, but it's hard to find now. But there are uh, some stores around that do still care kerosene. But you can find this in some of your big box stores, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, stuff like this. And this is clean heat. And this kerosene here has no odor to it. It burns and everything clean, but you don't smell like the typical kerosene do. Hold it up again uh, so I can make sure. Uh, Hold it down just a little bit so they can see it good. Yeah, come on down a little bit more. There you go. But now, and it's according to how much how much you use, how much how often you use it as to what is economical for you to use it or not. Uh, but uh, uh, using for what we plan on using for the heat, the the uh, greenhouse overnight or something on a few days that we get down below freezing and it's going to be cold like that then this will serve fine for what we're going to do but this is uh, uh, a typical if anyone's familiar with uh, kerosene heaters it has a wick on it now this has a handle right here where I can raise the head up on this and light the uh, thing now some kerosene heaters have a, a self igniter where you can have a battery in it you can just push a button and like that that's the way the one that we had that she was talking about we had in our salon that was it but it was a big heater it would make it was more like what a gas heater would look like a big square 
box and everything like that. That was a big and cost a, a lot more than what this costs now. But uh, but this one is a small one. This is what we use. But this, you raise it up just like this, and you turn it, and it has a wick in it. And uh, the wick comes up, and you see the wick. And the wick fits around a cylinder. It's a round wick that goes on it, and you can turn it up and down, and that raises and lowers the flame. So, and I'm using just a, a, a five starter stick here, and I just raise it up. Lift the handle up here. Wait around. a minute, let me see, can I zoom in? Probably can't, let's see. I don't know, can you see it? Can you see the flame? I think I see so much light mm -hmm. in here. But anyway, now I just let, let it let it down. And that... Did you see it got a flame on it? Yes, yeah, the flame is in it. It's, it's under the dome here now. And this is what's going to heat up, and that's where the uh, that's where all the heat is going to be distributed from around this dome that's inside. And you probably can, if you can get in, she can zoom in enough. You probably can see the flames coming up through the top part here. As a matter of fact, let me walk around and yeah, see. Yeah, you probably got to miss it. I got to miss up. Oh yeah, I see it that way. Okay. If you can probably see the flames right there, yeah, I can see it right there. Let me go ahead and look okay. Do you know how much of an area with this uh, cover? Okay. And if you can see, you can look and see flames right in here. I like that smell. Can you see it? It put me in the mouth of my bread okay. in there. Yeah. And you see the flames coming up through there. Now, you it's hot. That quick, guys. That quick. Wow, that fire's way up there to it. That, that was hot. Let me grab Wait a minute, you want me to, hold on, go ahead on, I'll I go get the gloves that came with it. Okay. Talk to the guy. But, uh, the as camera. you see, it didn't take long to get it, get it hot. Stand over at the camera and talk to him so it won't uh, go out, the camera won't cut off so you just be talking to him. But I'm going to turn this down just a bit. That's it, and it's, and it's burning right now, guys. And we're gonna, I'm gonna hold it right there for just a minute, and then we're gonna take back up when May May comes back with my gloves, okay? Okay, guys, we're hey, back on. Well, hold on a minute. Uh, this here, these are the gloves, guys, that come with, these gloves come with the heater. You probably need to turn that plane down. It's shooting all the way up through that. No wonder you got burned. <laughs> turn it down. Wait a minute. Tuck once see that there's a big flame coming up through there. Can you guys see it? And I mean it's hot too. Oh my God. I see smut coming, suck coming from it. You got it too high. So, so guys, that's, that's the way it, it burns. And it comes with two pairs of gloves so that you won't do that number that Tuck did. You won't have to do that but once, do you remember? You have to do <laughs> See, that again. You threw that, down. So that thing like... got hot quick. And this oh is the God. top here that I'm talking about putting this back on and and uh, you sit it right there and you can sit your pan or you right you on top of glove? here. You got the other Just got one on one on. Did I give you both of them? No. Oh. Yeah, just doing that and oh, like yeah. I said then you adjust the the however you how close you want the uh, the uh, stuff you're cooking to the flame by these handles here and this whole tops. What hammer? How you let me see? Got to hold it by this. I forgot I was supposed to be up here behind the camera. And it raises the top up and down on the heat and just tighten it back. However tight you want it if you're gonna use it for, for a cooktop. Otherwise I use it just like this to, for the heat in the uh I still the, see uh, those flames should not work. And it has a gauge here to show you how much fuel to get it right now. I just filled it half full, but it's got a gauge telling you how much uh kerosene and stuff that has in it. And I believe this it this is a, a two gallon tank I believe. It has a capacity, I think what to uh, burn I mean it could when you fill the tank it'll 
burned up to 18 hours, I think. But we won't be using it that young long, just probably overnight when the temperatures and stuff drops like down in the like, 30s. It says 4.5 liters, like, I think so. It, it's, it has enough fuel in there that it'll hold it. It will burn uh, at least through the night. And stuff on here is not long. We hadn't tried to just see how long would it burn anything yet. But uh, but this is this is it. And if uh, your flame's still pretty high. And this is what may maybe want to show everybody. And guys, let me tell you when I had my other uh, kerosene heater, it was I don't know if you had to do it or not, but that was something that my my grandparents and my parents did when they were burning just even a a, a wood burning heater. We used to use wood burner heaters back in the 60s when we was growing up to heat our house. They would always put a container of water on there to keep the, uh, whew, look at that now. It burned. Uh, to keep the, um, the moisture and stuff in the house. They always would put water on that. And I'll probably do the same when I put it out there in my greenhouse. I probably save me just a old, um, you know, some green, a green bean can or something like that, and put water in it. I probably get me one of the bigger green, uh, green beans cans, and I put water in it, so I keep the, uh, the, uh, so it won't get so dry up in there. You know, okay, guys, that's pretty much it. I went ahead and turned the flame down, turned it off. This, like I said, this turns it up and down. You turn it all the way down to the wick goes back down behind the metal frame there and it cuts the flame off. If you want to start it back up, you raise it up till you see a little bit of wick. Uh, use your uh, starter or match or whatever you want to use and get it get it lit. And uh, it'll burn as high flame or however you want it, as long as you want it. So right now, it got, the flame is out and it's no longer burning. So uh, this is pretty much it, guys. Uh, that's a handle you can pick it up and carry it by and, and put it where you want it and uh and I think this will uh adequately heat the uh greenhouse that we have with the size that it is. Oh yeah that thing to at is, least keep that thing is hot. You, you're not trying to keep plants hot, you're trying to keep them warm enough that they're so not the temperature freezing. won't drop. Yeah, so, so low temperature in won't drop so you can keep you can keep the thing up uh, inside of up around uh uh 50 degrees or so in there, then you won't worry about too much about plants freezing. Yeah, about, about uh -huh. 40, 45, about 45 50 to degrees. 50 degrees are better than it, and it may keep it better than that, but if you keep it up in that area, not down in the, in the, in the low uh, 30s, particularly the 20s and teens like we've had some uh, this year, and uh, that's what got most people thinking we had two or three days of uh, temperatures in the teens and the, and the low 20s. And that took out a lot of lot of plants of ours, as well as some made it through, but but that took out not only ours, a lot of other people, in which it is rare for us to have temperatures that, that low here where we are, uh, too many years consecutive, but every once in a while, every few years or so, we will, it will happen. And and right now, guys, it's, it's uh, what's the date, the 19th of February? Mm -hmm. uh, do not count out cold weather for us here. And, and yeah. hey, do we know, you know what, I don't, uh, hold winter. on just a minute, uh -huh. I, it's, uh, I was just think when you said that, I said, a uh, spring is probably less than a month away, right? Uh, uh, uh usually I know time the, change, uh, the 12th of May, uh, uh, they like Taven time goes spring, in. Spring, uh, spring used and to spring start in, right in, in, uh, in, uh, in March, but you know, everything changed now, I don't know if it's still doing or not, we just, we just, you just, you know, just be, uh. Yeah. Going along nowadays because they change everything that can be changed. So let me tell you something, guys. Back in the days when we was in school and I told no Tuck was in school, we did not have daylight saving time. Mm -hmm. I research it, guys, and see exactly when did uh, daylight saving time start over in the United States. We did not have daylight saving time, and we never went to school over in August. We always got out in the I got out the end of May and always returned to school on September after Labor Day. That was just, you know, you didn't even have to send out a letter to say when that was going to be. It was always going to be the um, first uh, after Labor Day. You know that that I don't know how that falls. 
but you look at wherever that is that's when we would always turn back to school for the uh school year we and we definitely didn't have no daylight saving time i don't care if you if your daylight got shorter the nights got longer we dealt with it and it was just fine they didn't change no time this hour that we got we didn't have this extra hour so uh okay guys so that, like let I, me, like let, I me was this, her, uh, let me say this stuff. now we okay. used to have a gas grill when we would lose power and i know when uh when oprah came through that uh hurricane came through but I'm telling you, because uh, I'm in some stamps, I feel something like, uh I had that gas grill, and that's what we uh, cooked on. Because, you know, we lost we lost power and stuff and all of that. And it took a while. I mean, so many people's out of power. It took so many, took a while to get it all out. But we wasn't out that long. But I had that gas grill. We don't no longer have a gas grill. Welcome Probably. back around there, baby. Oh, we probably, I don't want to get up here on the stove and get burnt like you did. Well, the stove is off now. Oh, it's, it's off? It's got to cool off. But, I uh, want to try to see just exactly how hot it is know what I'm dealing with. But guys, even now, with, the, with it being the month that we're in now, we're not out of cold weather because it's not unusual for us to have a cold spell around Easter. Or oh, but the groundhouse is shatter. And, uh, and uh, we uh, certainly what's, will be having some thing, other possibly? days in the, at least in the low 30s, if not lower. So we we will uh, definitely not out of cold weather in our area. Oh God, yeah. no! So, I can uh, say we we so we, we definitely will be spring. using that heater uh, some more this winter. If I plant my seeds mm -hmm. and stuff, and then yeah. it's gonna only be when that temperature. Like I say, I have a thermometer in there. The only when it shows a temperature, or either uh, tuck like normally listen to the weather report to see when when it's gonna drop down or whatever the case, and uh, we'll know whether to put it in there because I don't. I don't see normally I don't do any of this guys. I just whatever what I'm gonna plant for my spring garden, I usually do it uh about the second week in May. And if some of you guys go back on my videos, you would say, but after the second week, it may it'll be after the second week, but I don't like to do it too early because the way the weather is down here, you can go out there and plant and mess around and lose tuck at the end of lots a uh, lots of time. It really had to go back in and and uh replant because the stuff didn't you know because if that ground is um still real cold and don't be getting up to a certain temperature your seeds and stuff is not going to germinate and this it, it just it's just useless to uh be planted too early so just take your time with your planting and stuff and you know i go small and i got and guys i have another i have a i have two uh raised beds that's what they are raised beds that uh, we gonna start working on. We already done start working on, you know, getting everything ready for planting and stuff. Cause like I say, spring starts and probably, uh, uh, you know, probably, it's probably just about a month now. It normally starts in March somewhere. So all uh, your yeah, spring cops and stuff, you gonna have to get ready to put it out. And I had such a great time and enjoyed the little bit I did last year. I'm really back in the spirit for it. Even though a lot of us believe and probably know that we it's gonna happen, uh, uh, we probably gonna have to do a lot more planning than we plan. But as soon as everybody start planting and growing their own vegetables and going back to the old landmark, they're gonna find a way to keep seeds and all that stuff from us. So we might need to learn back then. They used to save their seeds. My dad and mama did. They, you know, they had a he had a place built where he would save the seeds and put them in jars and all that, that kind of stuff. And you didn't have all this situation these people do with it now. And that's the kind of uh, planning stuff that I told you guys I will be sharing with you. Just some of the memories that I have from when I was growing and that I can remember how my uh, parents used to do. I'm not going through all that uh, complicated or whatever. Read what it say on the pack and plant. And you let you get your soil and stuff right and have it in a have it in a good spot. Especially read on your pack whether the, uh, what you're planting and stuff, how much sunlight and stuff it requires. You get it in the right spot and you get your sun and stuff right. It don't you it, it don't take no rocket scientist to get out there and grow your vegetables and stuff right. 
but you got to have your heart in it and want to kind of do it right and not just getting out there and just doing it any kind of way and expecting it to grow but it's not hard and complicated at all and try to stick to the things that will grow in your area don't be just trying to grow anything or whatever that is not you know you don't have the uh, proper amount of um, sunlight and 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 growing time and stuff and then plant stuff out of season and all that i used to tell tuck all the time the people would plant the collards and cabbage and stuff and would have them out there he would and, and tuck had did it before i i used to say i said i took my dad and never did he plant that stuff over in the fall of the year i said we didn't have all that you know we had collards or something in a jar or something that my mama had saved from that i said about it um Thanksgiving and Christmas and stuff like that. That's when we be eating the most of the collards and turnips or, or whatever. And then, you know, they already have the peas and stuff canned in the jar. Don't try to, you know, they, they ate stuff in season and stuff back then. But nowadays, everybody think, you know, but it even tastes better and stuff like that. Collards and stuff, you know, I used to hear the old people say, a collars really ain't you know, if it's when it's real hot, you know, it just make them too tough and not really good. That that's the reason they didn't they didn't bother with it now. Cause I've heard a lot of people say that the collars and stuff that would be so tough and stuff in the store. I don't care if it's in a bag or whatever. Uh, but it's just not. They don't do good in a real hot weather. So guys, that's all I got to say to you guys, Tuck. Is there anything else you want to tell them about this situation here? No, that's it. I'm looking forward to using it, and then I definitely will be sharing with you guys how well it did on my seeds or whatever, because I don't use a, a pad, a growing pad, or lights or anything on there. I have, we have tried lights on seeds and stuff one time, but I, we decided that just too. That's just too much because we only planted, we only do a small level of gardening and stuff. And mostly that's what we're going to stay with be, uh, because uh, certain things I don't put in the freezer. You know, I told you, now I will put collops and turnips and stuff like that in the freezer. But I love snap, we used, we used to call them snap beans. But we call them, y'all call them green, we call them, uh, what is it, what is it? Pole green, green bean, pole beans. We use that now. Now, I love, we love that. I just love it. And when my mama used to can, can them, it used to be the best. But she the one first discovered, oh, my God, putting uh, putting them kind of beans in the freezer. Somebody may know how to do them, just, you know, do it good. And I ain't going to say I will ever try it again. That was just a pure disaster to me, uh, putting uh, green beans in the freezer. Uh -uh. That was a, a, a big no-no for me. But I'll be talking to you guys more. And I think, I, like I said, I'll be sharing a weekly meal with you. So uh, leave me a we'll comment. We'll pick up that container of uh, sit there so we can get a, make sure we get a yeah, good picture. Make, make I wasn't sure whether you got a good one or not earlier. Tell me this is? Yeah. When you doing it in your hand? Uh-huh. I think I did because I told you to hold it down. Okay. You see it now? What is it? Clean fuel? Clean heat? No, oh, clean uh -huh. heat. Uh-huh. So guys, this okay. is my kerosene heater, and let me know if you if you do any type of heating or any type type of use of a oh I'm sorry of a kerosene heater. Close to it, so may still be warm. Oh, I oh I had it up to it. I was touching on it, and it it's really not hot. Yeah, it cools off quick, but it get hot quick. Yeah, that, that when you put your hand Please up there, believe me. when you suck your hand up there, I'm gonna like, have a blister on my finger from behind that because oh, of that. Ten my finger. Yeah, but you stuck right. it in there. You stuck it in on the blaze. It was just it was blazing up. You couldn't see it because the sun got it off. I see that flame up there. I said, Oh my goodness, what is he doing? <laughs> and I, uh, I was I was kind of scared. If you jumped and knocked it over here, I wanted to be out the way. But okay. guys, let me go ahead on and close this uh, video out. Enjoy sharing it with you. And uh, just in case any of you guys need to do uh, some heating of your, keeping your plants warm and whatever you're keeping that, just consider this. And um, it, it works fine for me. If it didn't and I hadn't used it before, I wouldn't be trying to share it with you guys. But I 
just thought it was something that I would come and share with you. And all you peoples and scientists and stuff that know so much of why, why you shouldn't use kerosene and stuff like that, you can basically keep it to yourself simply because I done used it before. And I know, you know, just about how it works. And uh, I didn't have any problems with it. And my, none of my clients even, you know, you got some people say they're so allergic to whatever. They just always, ooh, they just love the way they say heat feel. And so that's all I can really tell you on it. And you know they have uh, various sizes and stuff like that. And if any of you want to know the price of how much I paid for this, uh, you can just uh, uh, drop me a comment or email, and I'll tell you. Cause now this, could, now like I say, you can use this in your house. Mm -hmm. I use it in a salon. You can most definitely use it in your house. The biggest thing uh, is to keep your place well ventilated. Uh, and everything like that because uh anytime you're using any kind of uh fuel you know that's carbon monoxide that's what the fumes usually what cause a problem with people that that's with gas uh uh kerosene or anything so you can keep it well ventilated uh somewhere where some moisture can flow then uh you should be no problem but if you have uh carbon monoxide indicators or anything uh like you do with heat protector it, it will let you know if anything like that but we never had any problem with it and we used them for years, like, like they may have. say. So that's really I didn't. I didn't try to. I didn't even try to research it. I normally I would have researched it. Cause first, Tuck was thinking, you can't put that in there on those. That probably would kill. What you were saying? It'll do to the plants. I said it'll kill them. I thought it would, it would make them wither. And then I mm -hmm. brought that back to his memory. I said, we're not gonna have it high, just you know whatever. And then he said, oh yeah, that is well, right. I thought about it. we got plenty of ventilation in there. That, that mm -hmm. those those uh aside window panels and stuff they uh. They're not tight seals, so air can get in and under, so, so that shouldn't be no problem. And then if you have to cook with it, I'll show you. If it, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm kind of looking forward to trying to cook something on top of it and see what it, how it do and will it have the case in case I have to use it one day. Put, hey, get but, that uh, Dutch oven or thing and try to fry some fish on it. Let's see how that do. But I was thinking about with it, tear that, oh, that, that, you know, that, that cast, that, uh, Long cabin dungeon is kind of heavy. But you can let it up and down. Uh -huh. I don't know. We, we it may try not. something it, on it, though. Is, it's pretty sturdy. I think it would cook about anything, though. Just, uh, I mean, stuff, especially stuff you can fry that you that won't have to have to cook for hours. Mm -hmm. So, okay, guys, leave me a comment and stuff on it. Have you ever used kerosene for heating or kerosene for heating or camping or whatever the, uh, the thing may do? But this, it don't come with fuel. We had to, we had to buy this separately. But we are gonna see how it works. And you know, guys, I will keep you informed. Set the key thing right there. That'll be a good camping uh, heater. If you're out camping somewhere in the woods at night, you need some heat. That'll be a good, good item right there. And I was thinking about it, Tuck. You know that little, little ceramic thing we bought for the granddaughters when we would, and we got out with Tim, we was having a little camp fly. Mm -hmm. It had the uh, uh, simulate, it was just, a, it was ceramic and we toasted marshmallows and stuff on it. Yeah. We got to find that thing. I don't even know where it's at. And they were so, so, that was, that was the best time, my guys, I can't tell you. They were so excited. And Britt was here with us then and we was, in, it was in this little small, we was inside. And then we, that, uh, the uh, little, uh, simulated campfire that we used mm -hmm. and it so it was real dark and all that and then Tuck start, start telling the granddaughter I'm gonna tell you a spooky story <laughs> a scary story and I mean they just got all scared and all of that I'm like guys let's settle down or whatever and then after they settled down and stuff like that we were more they were like Papa T, Papa T, tell us about scary story. Tell us about scary story. I said, no, you guys get too scared, and all you and you're not gonna go come piling in there at my bed tonight. So guys, we gonna go ahead on and end this video. And like I say, I always enjoy and share with you guys, just like you guys share with me. And um, so um, remember to thumbs up my video, guys. Uh, uh you're not, you know, you kind of not thumbing it up and I know what you're probably doing watching me on television like I do most of my YouTube uh, 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 watching on my television and stuff I don't I don't watch it on that song, uh, the phone but I will try to get off and go ahead on and thumbs it up the ones that I support so leave me a comment down below whether or not you uh, have used kerosene before when you were growing up or do you still use kerosene and um 
Yeah, well, I don't say it all like that. Tucker always telling me I don't say that. I wish you'd know, uh, get some software where you could put that in there, share, thumbs it up, and all of that. Because I've been doing that for quite a few years, and I, and I can't remember it all the time. But one thing I do want you guys to remember to think positive, use your common sense, and remember, guys, may may love you guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. Bye, you guys.